Okay, thanks for tuning into the Weather Channel on your Wednesday after Labor Day. Mike Bono and Bob Stokes here in the studio, Sybil Staples directing, as we're looking at a new tropical depression. Now, we've been showing you this for days, and it has looked pretty impressive coming off the African coast and then moving through the eastern Atlantic. One of the things that are most impressive about it is its size. You can see the circle outlining uh, the cloud pattern, but we're talking about whole Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico, and Africa is right about, well, I can't show you, but it's off the picture. That's a good trick. Try and show the folks something that's not on camera. But it's out there, and our depression is now occupying a good chunk of the Atlantic Ocean, so its size is very impressive. But we were waiting for something to really show up right in the middle uh, to call it a depression, and we've had that now. It's getting more focused, more organized. 35 mile an hour winds moving west-northwest at 17, which is about half of the speed it was moving at this time yesterday, less than a thousand miles east of the Lesser Antilles. Let's go in there and show you the visible satellite imagery. What's this, you say? That's another tropical wave that has gone through the islands with uh, some precipitation. More on that in a minute. This tumbling effect is uh, often what accompanies these Cape Verde systems, the ones that start out near Africa and move almost due west for days. They have a sort of a tumbling effect as they move on to the west. But the center right about here, pressure estimated to be about 1,007 millibars, and the winds so far picked up by ships, and that's the only readings we have. We don't have any aircraft in there right now, uh, have been indicating uh, borderline tropical storm strength. If this does turn into a storm, it'll be called Erica. That wouldn't be any great leap. It already has 35 mile an hour winds, and the storm strength would be 39. So we're expecting that to happen pretty soon. But you can see all the cloud elements filling in and getting more widespread, rotating around the center, which, one more shot, seems to be right about here. That seems to be our center of rotation as it comes out to the west-northwest. Now, we have the islands out there, the Leeward Islands, this uh, just might be Guadalupe in this vicinity. So that would be a general direction that it would be moving. If it makes a turn to the north, that would be beneficial to the Lourdes. Goes to the south, the Windward Islands would get more of an effect, but it looks like it'll sort of veer northward in the next couple of days and maybe be affecting some of the islands, the same islands that this wave is affecting today. So stay tuned for the latest advisories if you're watching in the Virgin Islands or on a satellite dish out in this area. We've had some heavy rain up to a third to a half an inch anywhere from Guadalupe to Martinique and Dominica and St. Lucia has had some rain as this wave moves on to the west. A little bit of wind shear, you can see some of the high clouds blowing off so it's doubtful as to how much this would intensify but still it's a viable wave, and we're going to have to keep our eyes on it. Upper-level winds show a lot of westerlies across the subtropical Atlantic Ocean, and that is usually the death knell for tropical development. But then you go into high pressure, Florida to the Gulf of Mexico, and another high out in the eastern Atlantic that has been supporting tropical development. As we can see our tropical depression now moving out of the picture, we have more tropical waves moving off Africa, and these, too, are candidates for development not anytime soon. Back to the western Atlantic, our westerlies are doing a number on this, but look at the circulation that we can detect off the Georgia coast. There's apparently something out there that's trying to uh, undergo tropical development, but the upper level winds are strong enough from the west that they're shearing the high clouds from the low level center. We go back toward the Gulf of Mexico. By the way, this could turn into a tropical development further out east into the Atlantic Ocean. Back here, clouds are gathering. Low pressure is, is due to form in the Bay of Campeche the next couple of days. Uh, upper level conditions not alien toward development. It could actually back on into the coast of Mexico before it gets very far, but it's definitely an area to watch. South of the Baja, things are flaring up, and southwest of the Baja, moving out to sea, also possibilities for depression. Weather Channel. No place on Earth has better weather. This tropical update is sponsored by Johnson's Foot Soap. Johnson's Foot Soap soothes tired, aching feet. Well, we have a brand new tropical storm for you, and uh, that's in the eastern, in the Atlantic Ocean. In fact, uh, that is the first tropical storm of the season. It's number five in the Atlantic, but the first storm of the season that has come out of the deep tropics. As you know, all the others we had up to Danny were forming either off the Atlantic coast or in the Gulf of Mexico near the U.S. This one was a Cape Verde system. It came out of the deep tropics near Africa, and now we've got it up to tropical storm strength. 40 mile an hour winds. It was named a depression this morning with 35 mile an hour winds, so slow strengthening, slow organization going on right now with that uh, weather system. As we're seeing it, the, the center of it is 800 miles east of the Lesser Antilles, 
and uh, that uh, makes it uh, a few days away from the coastline. 12.6 north and 48.2 west. Let's take a look at that satellite photograph right now and uh, see how it's moving. We have the rotation very nicely showing up right now and this is what we're looking at. It's a large system. It's as big as some hurricanes get to be. And the center of it right about there as it's moving off to the west-northwest. You might be caught to this, or your attention might be drawn toward this system west of the Leeward Islands, which did bring up to a half an inch of rain around the French islands, Guadeloupe, Martinique, and even down to Dominica. And uh, that may have a run at it, a developing too, but it's undergoing some wind shear. This is overpowering it by quite a bit as it uh, runs at least 500 miles from north to south and east to west, maybe even 700 on the outside at the size of this. But the center of it is getting more organized. You can see the uh, highlight of the white right there. Now we look at the visible satellite shot, which is getting darker by the hour out there. And again, you can see the rotation, but all day long the clouds have been getting deeper, they've been getting more widespread, and moving off to the west. So we're looking at this in the vicinity of the Leeward Islands and maybe a little bit north if uh, luck would hold in the next couple of days. In fact, uh, it may take about 72 hours right now the way it looks for Erica, Tropical Storm Erica, to get a beam of the islands. And by that time, it could be close to hurricane force. So stay with us here on the Weather Channel. We're gonna be following it for you. And we're not exactly sure of the track, whether it'll be hitting the Lourdes head on or running off and just missing them all together. It's three days away and there is an uncertainty involved, but it's generally heading in this direction and it's something to be reckoned with. The system that did go through, if you live in the islands and you're watching us on a satellite dish, the system that gave you about a half an inch of rain, give or take, earlier on, is now moving into the open Caribbean Sea. As you could see, some of the high clouds being sheared off a little bit, and we're not expecting any rapid development out of this, but we can't count it out. More much-needed rain in the Virgin Islands coming out of this, we figure. We're looking at a lot of westerly winds, though, through the central part of the subtropical Atlantic, which don't, doesn't really support development. But where Erica is, the winds are out of the east, all the way up to 40,000 feet and more, and that's what has been supporting it. There's some uncertainty as to what the wind uh, scheme will be when it gets to near the Caribbean or north of the Caribbean. There are chances that the upper-level winds will start coming out of the south and the mid-level winds also and bring it up to the north and, and miss the Caribbean altogether, which would be nice. And in that case, it would probably miss the U.S. mainland. Uh, there's Erica going out, and then another a tropical wave coming off the coast. These are the Cape Verde Islands, so we'll keep our eyes in that vicinity. Also, low pressure off the Atlantic coast, and uh, there is even a, a chance that this could even get tropically organized, but it would happen over the open Atlantic. There is a circulation there. There's a lot of warm water, but it's being sheared by some upper-level winds as those clouds head out to the east. Also into the Gulf of Mexico. The Weather Channel. No place on Earth has better weather. This tropical update is sponsored by the Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. If you are tuning in for the first time since, say, maybe this morning, you'll be interested to know that we now have a tropical storm out there in the Atlantic. That's right, our tropical depression has been upgraded to a tropical storm as of this afternoon. So we're now looking at tropical storm Erica, centered at 12.6 north, 48.2 west, 800 miles east of the Lesser Antilles, and uh, sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. It is moving to the west-northwest at 18 miles per hour. The estimated central pressure at 1,004 millibars. And here we can get a better perspective as we uh, look at a view. You can see South America, you can see the Lesser Antilles, and then, of course, you're right there in the middle of the screen. You can see our uh, tropical storm. And the tropical storm force winds actually extend out about 85 miles from the center of circulation. Now, this has been showing some movement, as I mentioned, to the west and northwest. Uh, whether or not it continues exactly on that track remains to be seen. Uh, it is days away from the Antilles. Antilles. We'll mention that, but it is possible that this may have a factor on uh, the weather there as we head toward the weekend in some way, shape, or form. And again, it's too early to speculate uh, exactly where this is going to uh, or how it might impact the islands. Best advice we can give you if you're traveling to the Antilles, if you're watching from the Antilles, that you monitor this closely with us. It is possible that this could strengthen a bit. It is in a favorable area as far as the upper level winds are concerned, and water temperatures are certainly ample warm as well. I can zoom in a little bit closer for you here and you'll get a better inspection of uh, the Lesser Antilles. There is also a little weak disturbance, a little wave that has moved across this region. Now originally we had an area of upper level low pressure 
in the Eastern Caribbean. That has actually meandered into the Western Caribbean, so conditions in the upper levels of the atmosphere are becoming a little bit more favorable. So even what you see there around the Lesser Antilles will be kind of watching closely as well. So a couple of different things to watch there. We can expand the picture a bit more, and you'll be able to see that the, it's actually pretty quiet for the time being around Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, on up toward Cuba. As we uh, take a quick peek at the upper level winds, you'll be able to see also that we have some favorable conditions again with upper level high pressure in through the Gulf of Mexico, uh, back down toward the Bay of Campeche, and uh, also as we work our way uh, on into the Eastern Caribbean and portions of the Central and Eastern Atlantic, looking a little bit better in some of those regions. I'll take you quickly on into uh, the Eastern Atlantic, and we'll find uh, little waves moving off the coast of Africa. Uh, these will certainly bear some watching. There is some convection there. The water temperatures are ample warm, so uh, we'll have to watch this region fairly closely. There's an area of low pressure uh, just off the southeast coast there, too. You can see the cluster of bright colors, the convection or thunderstorms associated with it. A little bit of a drift to the east there as well. The cloudiness that you see across the southeastern part of the country is due to a front, a trough that's diving on southward, and that's going to help to steer that disturbance there in the southeast on up and out and away from the U.S. So even if that did have uh, some sort of a, an advantage or a chance to develop into something tropical, it is going to be moving away from the U.S. What is important is what you see down there, the cluster of thunderstorms in and around the Bay of Campeche. I will continue to watch that cluster of storms because uh, it is uh, fairly close to land, but it's also in an area that's favorable for development, and it will bear some watching. It's possible that something might develop there. So as you can see, as we head through the Atlantic Basin, there are several spots that will really need to be monitored over the course of the next several days. Now into the Pacific, into the Eastern Pacific. A new tropical depression here, about 350 miles south of Cabo San Lucas. And uh, actually it's about 375 south southwest of Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. This is moving to the west-northwest at 17. Some strengthening uh, might be expected with this, probably followed by a slow weakening. And then as you look, uh, another tropical disturbance about 1,150 miles southwest of Cabo San Lucas, that too could develop in a day or so into a depression. So a couple of areas to watch there. Our final stop, uh, you'll see a couple of acti areas of activity out there. One, uh, tropical storm, Oliva which is upgraded uh, from a tropical depression last evening. Not a threat to land at this time, and uh, eventually uh, we're going to be watching that as it continues to move to the west. <laughs> the Weather Channel. No place on Earth has better weather. This tropical update is sponsored by the Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Well, it is time now to take a look at our tropical storm, and we do have the latest numbers there for you as we check things out as of 11 o'clock Atlantic Standard Time. And uh, you'll get a view here that uh, Tropical Storm Erica is now centered at 14.2 north, 49.1 west, 785 miles to the east of the Lesser Antilles. Uh, sustained winds are up a bit, up to 50 miles per hour, and it is moving to the northwest. It's taking more of a northwesterly turn at 20 miles per hour. Uh, estimated central pressure at 1,000 millibars, and that is down 4 millibars from the previous advisory. Uh, as we look at the satellite picture, we'll put this into motion for you, and we are starting to find, uh, again, an area of deep convection near the center, and a well-defined uh, curve band off, off to the southeast, the upper level outflow looking a little bit more impressive. Uh, this is looking somewhat uh, elongated, perhaps some influence is still from the, some of those persistent westerlies, uh, but uh, it certainly seems like this should probably hold its own against the westerlies as uh, conditions are fairly favorable as we head into the eastern Caribbean for uh, any further development. So it is possible that this uh, could continue to strengthen. The exact path, as you know, is always uh, a tough call and is still days away from the Leeward Islands. So we do want to uh, certainly make that clear to you. 
already one disturbance moving through that region. But uh, we'll continue to watch this, and if you have interest in the Antilles, we would certainly strongly urge you to keep it tuned here for the next uh, several days, as uh, we'll be watching this very, very closely. Exactly uh, what effect, if any, this is going to have on the islands remains to be seen, but this is something that needs to be monitored very, very closely. I can uh, zoom in a little bit closer for you here. We'll get a better inspection there. As uh, we can see the islands and you can see a little disturbance that has been affecting this region as well. This did not really get too much of a chance to develop. It's still something that will be monitored as we have had an upper area of low pressure kind of moving westward into the western Caribbean. So this whole area becoming more favorable for development. So we'll kind of uh, watch what happens here. But this is going to be the force that we'll have to be watching. That's our tropical storm Erica. As we expand the picture a little further westward. We go on into the Caribbean. You can see Hispaniola, west, uh, eastern portions of Cuba. Here's Puerto Rico. Uh, not a whole lot of activity across this area. We can look at the upper level winds. And over this region, uh, we'll find there are little pockets of favorable areas into the Gulf of Mexico, back into the Bay of Campeche. Upper level high pressure is present there. Uh, upper level high pressure, as I mentioned, becoming a, a little bit more organized here into the eastern Caribbean, where once we were dealing with an upper level low, and even as we head into the eastern Atlantic, things are not entirely unfavorable. So we'll have to watch these waves as they move off the coast of Africa. Water temperatures have been ample warm here for the past couple of months, so we'll continue to watch for any development across this region. Now, a little closer to home, a couple of points of interest. I'm going to point them both out to you. First, an area of low pressure here, and uh, we have been watching this, and it looks like it's something that might want to develop, but you can see these clouds that are digging across the south and east. That's associated with our trough that is literally going to push that up and out of the way. So even should that try and develop into something, it's going to get pushed well away from the U.S. Also a point of interest here into the Bay of Campeche, disturbance here that will certainly need to be watched very, very closely. Again, conditions very favorable in the upper levels. The water temperatures are warm enough for development. This is a little bit close to land, but it does seem to try to get uh, more of its act together, and we're still finding some deep convection in that area. We'll have to watch for some sort of surface circulation. Our final stop takes us into uh, this region, uh, Tropical Depression 13E, and we continue to watch this. Uh, it may actually increase a little bit in intensity, but it is heading away from Mexico and will be moving into cooler waters.